Good morning and welcome to Community Connections with Children's Services Council of St. Lucie County. I am just one of your humble hosts, Sean Boyle. With me is Ashley Mock. And welcome to the half hour radio. Let me get make sure I get this right. Radio program every Sunday on 104.5 The Flame at 10 a.m. Check. To a video show that is on our uh, YouTube page. Wow, we are getting fancy. A YouTube page. But if you're like, Sean, let's up that again. We are also, this show is also a podcast. So there's no reason why any viewer or listener can't catch us at any time that they want, because what we do with this time together is talk about resources and things that are available for children and families in our great community we call St. Lucie County. Now we at the Children's Services Council, despite hosting the show now for about nine years, still, I think we can concretely say that we are not radio media professionals. But what we do every single day, what we strive and work on, and I think we're getting pretty good at it, is, uh, is concentrating on five priorities for our community. And those priorities are, one, making sure every baby's a healthy baby. Two, stopping child abuse before it happens. Three, keeping kids off the streets. Four, keeping them in school. And five, keeping them off drugs, alcohol, and other risk behaviors. And we do this by offering programs and resources for all families in our community. That's right. And while the show is a very entertaining way to learn about those programs and others that are offered in the community, there's a couple different ways that you can get more information about them. And one of those is on our website, which is cscslc.org. We have a list of all of our funded program partners there along with their contact information. And not only that, but there's a lot of really fun stuff on our website too. I know we're gonna talk a little bit about some of the new stuff that's on there, um, but I'll just point out as well that we also, in addition to the information about our programs that's shared on there, and I, I need to update these. So this is a good reminder for myself, but we share success stories with our board all the time. I need to get better about putting those on the website and sharing those with our community too, because they're really powerful. And there are some really good ones on the website um, from families that have been impacted from some of our funded programs. So I don't remember that often. This, you know, I have to remind like myself it. what's on there. I, I like how you've turned this into like a management meeting. Like, you know what we need to focus on? You know what I gotta get better on? You know, I like how it's the true. radio show is working <laughs> multiple Let me write aspects that down. here. Let me write that down. Uh, um, and another good way to connect with us, if you're like, Sean, Ashley, I really enjoy this video There's program not or radio ways. podcast. You can jump on and follow our Facebook page. Um, just look up Children's Services Council St. Louis County, or you can look up on Instagram, yeah. which is like Facebook, except less reading. So <laughs> if you, if you want right. to just look at life and images, follow us on Instagram. We've been great about updating that. Um, and I just want to point out something, and this is to encourage our radio and podcast listeners to jump to the YouTube page to check out this particular video, because I feel in a way you and I are sort of twinning today. We are and not the know, same color, but I always <laughs> wear a CSC shirt because it just takes down dress choices for me and I enjoy that but it's you're sporting easy. our children's yeah. services council shirt today. I am you know I thought like for the radio show today I might need it to represent so there you go so we have a great guest but we have I have two things that I, we need to bring up before we get to our guest okay one is very important now we are recording on a Wednesday Wednesday yeah. it's gonna air on Wednesday. Sunday so I need you guys to wrap your heads around this time travel aspect Wednesday it's gonna air on Sunday but I need everybody to think back into their minds on Friday to wish my co-host a very happy birthday because it's your birthday this Friday it is my birthday this Friday you know I feel like this is it's a big birthday and I know we kind of have Circle I asked around you if this. I could share the number. Can I share the number? <laughs> you can. I'm, I'm All right. Turning so fun fact, I'm Ashley sorry. started when she was 12. <laughs> and I don't know, through some time warp continuum, she's now 40, which is just I, weird to me. It's crazy. It's also weird to me. Um, but no, I feel like this is, uh, I don't know. I feel like 40 is the number that people, like it's a hurdle, right? It's it's kind of challenging. And I, I don't know. Is 50 the new 40? Yeah, I was going to tell you, like, I'm obviously, I was going to say a couple years older, but who I'm kidding. I'm, I think I'm 13 years older than you. And when I turned 40, so, you know, I play basketball. Um, and when I turned 40, I thought, oh, you know what? It's all going to go downhill. I had my best seasons, my best season wow. in a long time when I was 40. Okay. To your point, I think the new 40 is actually 50. Okay. 
So I don't need to worry when, about this one. That's when the engine light starts to come on here and there. And I don't think at 40, you have to worry about your engine light coming on. Okay. I did recently, someone said to me like that that was kind of a misnomer because at 40, you're living your best life. Like you're kind of, you have a good career. You're kind of solid. Your family is growing and functioning and good. And, and I feel like that's kind of true. You know, what's going to happen. And I've noticed this, what you're going to, what's going to happen is you, when you get past 40, you're going to start to realize like, uh, like people like, you know, like that you admire you're like oh my gosh they're younger than me and then <laughs> and then, and then you're going to be like oh like the ads on tv really aren't geared oh. towards you anymore <laughs> oh <laughs> that's I'm what i noticed like... it's weird <laughs> but, uh anyway thank you very, I ha very happy birthday thank you and, and we celebrate you both past and current and future tense <laughs> however we worded <laughs> that uh the other oops are you hitting buttons? Sorry, I, just, I disappeared there for a minute. The other, that's what happens when you talk with your hands and you accidentally hit your keyboard. The other thing that we want to bring up, and it just got released, and, and trust me, we're getting to our guests, uh, but it just got released. It's a point of pride because the work that we do at the Children's Services Council isn't, and I think all of our listeners and viewers long time know that it's not us. It, we partner with these wonderful organizations, currently 51 programs that last year reached 30,000 kids. And, and, you know, once a year, we publish what we call our annual impact report. And it's really a culmination of us all working together and what impact we've had on the community, obviously, in regards to children and families. That report is just now online. And so, uh, Ashley, do you want to kind of talk about it a little bit while I pull up the screen? Yeah, I will. So, you know, I feel like a lot of times organizations like ours, businesses that are required to share annual reports, like they're, they're really data heavy, right? Like that's the point you want to sort of convey a message about what happened in your organization through numbers. And so we have really tried, and I think at Sean's urging, um, have really tried to make like a coloring book version of that data because we want it to be easily digestible. We want you to understand what those numbers mean and that behind the numbers are actually those 30,000 children. And, you know, that's important. So we try to really simplify the information that's, that's displayed in here in a way that it makes it easy to understand. So we talk a little bit about the kids that we serve and the money that's spent to serve those kids. Um, but then we talk about the programs and the impact that they're actually having and what that looks like for our community. So it's not just that these programs are available and they're out there, but what are they doing? Like, how, how is it working in the community? And so I would just encourage you, it's a quick read. Um, you really can kind of flip through it, but it's in this fun little, this, what Sean's flipping through is actually available on our website. And so you can just kind of quickly flip through the pages and get an idea of the work that's actually being done within those programs. So just a couple of highlights before we jump to our mm -hmm. guests, because trust me, we're not going through the whole report. We might do a whole <laughs> show on that. We've actually talked yeah, about that, but this go. is not the one. We want you to go check it out. Um, and real quick, we always mention the board and the team of the Children's Services Council because, you know, Children's Services Council obviously isn't just Ashley and I. So mm -hmm. here is our, our wonderful board who are so committed to our community. And as a reminder, five are... Uh, Per our state statute, five are there based on their position. The other five are governor appointees. But I also want to point out our, our small but mighty team and a big thanks to all of them because they bring it every single day to impact our community. And trust me, we realize and recognize that we work for you, uh, the listener, the residents of St. Lucie County, and we take that attitude towards everything that we do. Um, it's, not, it's not our resources, it's your resources, and we want to hear from you and we make sure that we're hitting the need. And then real quick, what Ashley mentioned, uh, this is 31,000. We are the king of ages five to nine. It represents 62% of the population that we serve. You may say, Sean, why? Why do you say that? Because we are, are we are focused on prevention. If we can keep kids out of juvenile justice, out of children and families, if we can intervene early so that they get, you know, are successful in school. So if you think about when you want to prevent, what's the best age to get to the kids? It's the ages five to nine. Not that we ignore all the other ones, but you know, 
And then real quick, just um, I'll flip through, but you can see that handy dandy, quick little dashboard indicators of the impact by all those five categories that I say every single day, multiple <laughs> times a day. And then obviously all of our wonderful program partners. So we strongly encourage you to check it out. Very proud of this annual report, proud of the work and all of our partners went into it. Uh, I want to thank Tanya for pulling all that data out because you can imagine we're a very data heavy organization and we have to organize it. And I want to uh, give you actually full credit because, you know, we we made the switch. Like we want this annual report to be read in less than five minutes, i.e. the coloring book version. And trust me, you can read this thing in five or less minutes and get a good snapshot of the work that's being done. And of course we promote our radio show. <laughs> Of course. All right. I'm going to stop sharing while we let in our guests. Okay. So, you know, I think most of the time that we do the show, we bring on a funded program partner, like one of the organizations um, that we work closely with. I'm really excited today because we've got um, two great ladies from United Against Poverty with us, and I actually haven't gotten to meet them yet. So this is my introduction to them. I know they have talked to both you, Sean, and John Caesar in our office, um, but I'm excited because there's a lot of cool things happening at United Against Poverty that we're going to get to talk about today. Who in this community has John not talked to? Like, I mean, I, I swear, I think John has talked to every single person in this community, which is great, right? <laughs> that might be true. So welcome, ladies. Thank you for joining us today. Um, I don't know, Kelly, if you want to do like a quick intro about United Against Poverty, and then you can talk about who you've got with you today. I think they should uh, yes. do rock, paper, scissors to determine <laughs> who goes first, and we can watch it. We can do that. <laughs> We already decided. We did it already, Sean. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Good morning. Thank you for having us. Um, I'm Kelly Santos, and I am the program manager here at United Against Poverty at our Fort Pierce location in St. Lucie County. United Against Poverty has three different lo locations where we have programs and our membership grocery program, Orlando, uh, Indian River County at Vero Beach as well as here in St. Lucie County, our Fort Pierce location. And today I have with me Jillian, uh, Jillian Habakost. I am the crisis navigator and volunteer coordinator here at St. Lucie County. Very nice. So I know I feel like, maybe this is not true, but I feel like most people who have heard about United Against Poverty or know about what you guys are doing would be familiar with the center in Fort Pierce for the member share grocery program. Is that pretty accurate? Okay. Yeah, the majority of people we see are because of the member share grocery program. So talk a little bit about that and how that works. And, you know, if somebody's interested in, in becoming a member, how does that work? Give us a little kind of a background on how to do that. Yeah, so anyone who um, is interested in signing up for the member share grocery program, they can come visit our location here at 2520 Orange Avenue. We are right at the intersection of MLK and Orange Avenue. When they come in, they fill out a one-page intake form, which we have in English, Spanish, and in Creole. It takes a minute to fill out the form and a minute to get the membership card. In order to uh, qualify, you have to uh, be 200% or below the poverty level. So in 2022, for a family of four, it's 55500 If you have any questions about where you fall within the 200% or below, we have a chart where you can look at it here at the center and see where you fall. On the form, when you fill out the information, we do ask for income, but we don't require any supporting documents with that. So it is self-reported. So we do ask people to fill out the form to the best of their knowledge, and we'll be able to sign them up for the membership grocery program. Once they get the card, the card has a barcode, and that barcode they use every time they come into the grocery store to check in. So that way we know who's here, who's taking, uh, making use of our membership grocery program. At our store, they'll be able to have access to um, food items as well as household items um, and have some healthcare items. So we have fresh produce every day that comes into the store. We do have um, shampoo, so hygiene products. We have some baby products. And then you might find some furniture here. So um, a lot of individuals who have been able to come here have been able to purchase items to make household upgrades to their home. So some flooring, some vanities, um, even some light lamps. Wow, that's Very really nice. cool. I know I follow you guys on Facebook and I feel like there you always have something fun and exciting that's coming in. And I'm always like, wow, that's really neat. Like there, it's really kind of 
um, it covers more than just groceries, I feel like, but yes. would be a good way to say it. So, so let's go to the next step. So I have, I, I'm going to go there. I'm going to time this Kelly. Cause after a minute, after two minutes, I'm gone. No, I'm so I'm, I'm kidding. A minute to sign up a minute to get the card. Now that I've got a card, can I come as often as I want? Absolutely. Absolutely. You can. And, and talk to us about, because when I've done the tour and I've been there a few times, I'm so impressed because it's like walking into a Publix, an Aldi, a Winn-Dixie. It's a grocery store. Yes. Yeah. So when people come in, it's a regular grocery store. You just, you're a member here, right? So as a member here, you get access to food items and household items that almost 70% below retail value in comparison to anywhere else in the community that sells similar items. And what we ask is that members contribute to a small handling fee. So the handling fee is the cost for the items that we have in the store. And that handling fee allows us to keep operations running within our store. So individuals can make purchases using cash, debit cards, as well as using their SNAP benefits and their WIC benefits here at the store. So oh, at a 70% reduction uh, compared to Publix, Aldi, or Winn-Dixie, that's, that's incredible. And I will tell you, this is a little weird thing to say, but I'm a big cereal fan, right? Like, like that's, that's what I feel confident in making in the kitchen. And, and I remember when I was going, I was like, wow, they've got great cereal. <laughs> yes, yes, we have great a, variety. Yeah, it's a, it's a legit grocery store. Yeah. yeah, yeah. You can purchase in individual cases as well as in bulk for many of the items that we have here. So maybe on Facebook, you may have seen that we had a bunch of mangoes, two cases for a dollar. They were going out like hot Cheetos. <laughs> and we also <laughs> saw hot Cheetos yes. in bulk, right? Yeah. So you just never know where you'll find uh, individual cases or in bulk. That's really cool. Do you know how many members you currently have at the Fort Pierce Center? We have over uh, a thousand individuals sign mm -hmm. up. Members have to register uh, and renew registration every year within our membership okay. grocery program. And the great thing is that members who sign up here at our Fort Pierce location can use their membership to go to our Vero Beach location and to our Orlando locations. So they have access to all of our membership grocery programs um, in Florida. And I, and I think really it's cool. important. The location is a great location, you know, 25th and orange or MLK and orange. And I like that because we hear this all the time. We hear the, the term food deserts, right? Meaning that there's certain pockets in our community where they can't get fresh produce and, and meat and whatnot. Um, but I mean, I've been there before and I've seen all your fresh produce too. I mean, it's, it's, I, I just, I, I know I keep saying this, but it's like going into Publix, Winn-Dixie or Aldi. I got to say all three of them now because, you know, <laughs> just in case one of them wants to sponsor us. But, but, uh, 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 but it is going into, you know, a, a, a real grocery store with, you know, everything that a, a traditional grocery store would have. And I, I will say there's a couple of things that always catches me when I go in is, and I know we're going to talk about everything else that you guys do, and particularly, Julian, what you said that you do. I'm, I'm very intrigued by. Uh, but you have a set, I know this is weird, but you have a set of angel wings on the wall there that every time I go there, that always like, I don't know, I'm always impressed by that. You know, every, everybody I go with wants to get their picture taken with the angel wings. Do you know any of the history on those angel wings? So we don't know the history of the Angel Wings. We are a new team, um, okay. but we do not We do know that uh, a lot of our slogan is up. How do we uplift ourselves? How do we uplift ourselves from poverty or any challenges that we have going on in our lives? Everyone that comes through the store has an opportunity to receive help from someone that's in our space, right? So how do we continue to uplift the community? And the Angel Wings are a representation of that. And when we have our students graduate from our employment program, which we'll talk about later, we ask our students if they want to take a picture with the wings. Because once they go through our four-week program, there's a sense of reboosted self-esteem, motivation, and resiliency that comes out of them and they're able to give gratitude to themselves for the work that they've done to themselves for the commitment and investment that they've made in themselves to be able to uplift themselves so a lot of the the dynamic behind and the story behind the wings is individuals investing in themselves putting themselves first but also receiving support from someone else here at this location and wings That's allow right. you to go up right so exactly. so later is now let's talk about the employment program <laughs> yes so we have our success training employment program which is our step program many people in the community know it as step and that program allows us to support individuals who are looking to um, create changes in their career pathways or are looking for 
jobs, right? So we're finding that a lot of individuals are having a hard time landing a job that's ideal for them because there's so much going on, so much has changed um, over these past two years and individuals and companies are changing the way they do things. So how do we make sure that we are supporting people in the community to be able to pitch themselves um, in the way that employers are looking for ideal candidates? So a lot of the work that we do with our students is that we provide emotional intelligence training as well as job acquisition readiness training. And what that means is that in our emotional intelligence portion, we do the self-awareness. We do how to manage difficult behaviors. We do support individuals to understand what areas they are great at that come easy to them and what areas are areas of improvement for them. So that way when they're sitting down at an interview, they're able to translate those things or not. And they're not saying, well, I'm not good at this and I can't learn this. It's rather I'm willing to learn this. I'm willing to grow. I'm open to engage in conversations about areas that are new to me. So we do lots of that work with our students in four weeks. They leave us with a resume, a cover letter. They leave us with having gone through a mock interview process. And in that mock interview process, we invite employers within our network who are willing to volunteer their time to get to meet our students and possibly hire them on the spot. So it's a, it's a great experience being able to engage community members who are looking for a change in their lives, connect them to employers, set them up with the soft skills and the hard skills you know, um, that they need because we also provide them with training opportunities, certifications. So uh, we just had a student who was interested in home health care. And in order to qualify for the job, she needed to get her CPR first aid training. We were able to get her that training for free through our organization. So we are able to support individuals in maximizing all the resources available to us through partners that we have through our organization, but also going out there and finding resources through our employer networks. In addition to um, the class portion, to pairing them up with employers, we have a success coach. And the role of a success coach is to support individuals on a one-on-one -on -one basis for three years after they graduate to ensure that they have everything they need to retain a job, to be coached through difficult situations that may come up at work, but also to help elevate um, their skills and help them seek promotion if that's something they desire. So continuing to refresh the resume, continuing to walk through challenges and difficult conversations about how do you ask for a raise, right? How do you prepare yourself and come to the table with how, how you are worthy to an organization or a company? So our success coach does a lot of that work with individuals once they're done with our class. That is very cool. I didn't realize that so much was contained within that program that's really neat i just wrote so, a note to remind myself to talk to you when we're done with the show about our fates program as oh, as, yeah. as you're working with families and and as they gain employment they're eventually going to go above that 200 percent federal poverty level there's a physical cliff that's created once they go above there and so we're working and addressing one of those physical cliffs which is child care which nice. I guess I was supposed to talk about after the show, but that's what we can talk about. <laughs> but so. there it is. So Great. Kelly, I, I don't want to miss the opportunity for somebody that's listening that's like, oh my gosh, like that sounds like something that I want to get involved in. I need a success coach. Like how, how do I do that? Where do they get more information? How do they get signed up for that? Um, what's the best way for them to get more info? Yeah, so the, the first step you can do if you don't want to come to the location right away is call us at 772 four six eight eight five four three the number is seven seven two four six eight eight five four three and they can dial extension three seventeen or three oh five three seventeen or three oh five and they can ask about our step program and we will direct them on the next steps um, they can also come to our location here at 2520 Orange Avenue. And when they come to our reception area, they can say that they're interested in enrolling in the SEP program. From there, they will complete an intake form where we'll gather information from them and uh, let them know about orientation. The great thing about us being on the show is that we have our next cohort starting April 4th. Oh, awesome. Perfect. We are currently recruiting individuals who are interested in joining our program starting April 4th. If you can't do April 4th, don't worry. We have more sessions coming up down the line for the remainder of the year. So we'll be able to work with you. And we also recognize that some individuals may not be ready to commit to our four-week program. So 
what we do is that if there are anything obstacles that are in the way of them joining our step program what we do is that we pair them up with Chilean, our crisis navigator, who's able to provide resources to alleviate some of those issues that are deterring them from being able to commit to a four-week program. Our program is from Monday through Friday, 9 to 12.30 p.m. After the four weeks, we have our graduation and then they start working with our success coach. And sometimes we do have individuals who end up getting employed by our partner employers within two weeks of our course. Wow. So we understand wow. that some individuals um, may find employment very soon. Right we understand that, yeah, we also understand that we have individuals who um, have the qualifications, they have their resume, they may not need to go through our SEP program. And we have connections to employers who are ready and willing to take um, individuals that we refer to them for employment. Okay, so, so I know we're running out of time and Jillian's been way too quiet. So. <laughs> yeah. I think we thought she was going to escape without talking. I know, but no, not we're, usually. We're, I promise. <laughs> <laughs> we can't. We can't let that happen. So no. you mentioned Jillian's title, crisis navigator, mm -hmm. a couple of times, and I'm super interested in that. So tell tell us more about what that means, Jillian, and what you get to do there. Sure. So that can mean, I mean, really a litany of things. Um, a lot of the people that I'm seeing that are coming in in crisis or that are would consider themselves to be in crisis. Um, right now, it seem, seems to be, you know, issues with rent, being able to stay on top of rent. Um, we know that we're in a housing crisis. We're in a housing shortage. There's more people than houses right now. Um, rents are going up. And just being able to find those resources for people. And that can be, like I said, anything from housing to um, food insecurity to domestic violence, really anything that someone would consider themselves to be in a crisis or having trouble with. Um, they're able to come in and speak with me. We perform an intake similar to kind of what Kelly was talking about with the intake process for the grocery program, but it's a lot more of a conversation. So just, okay, what's going on? Tell me, you know, what have you tried? Why hasn't this worked? Or have you thought about this? And just really brainstorming with them rather than me just handing them a list and saying, okay, go, best of luck. Um, after we fill out that intake and we have that conversation, we then complete an action plan so that it's a concrete idea of, okay, these are the places that we're going to reach out to, whether they, it's that I need to complete a referral and someone will contact them or that's just other numbers and places that they can call and talk to um, so that they leave here with an idea of, okay, this is my next step. This is what I need to do um, rather than just continuing to pass them on. Um, and then they always know that they have the option of if something didn't work for them or if they need more resources, I always tell them, please come back, please come see me, give me a call, we'll figure this out. Um, and I think that that's, that's huge to people, just to know that somebody is actually there that's willing to help you, is willing to listen, um, and isn't just going to pass you on. Yeah, for sure. And, and so those resources, so... Uh, you know, so far we've talked about the grocery program, the step, the job uh, training and career coach, and then the crisis, inter I call it crisis intervention. But I, I think what I got from you, Julian, is the family determines what the crisis is. You're just there to help Absolutely. them get through whatever Absolutely. it is. And some of it can be that they come in with, um, you know, one issue, whether it's homelessness, and then we sit and we talk a little more and we find out that, okay, well, they're also having an issue with employment or they're also having an issue with childcare or, um, you know, medical bills, things like that, that we can add additional resources and referrals to that to really get to the root issue of whatever's going on. Yeah, it's um, never just the, one thing. No, no, <laughs> not at all. And a lot of the time it really just goes down to what those basic needs are. Um, that if we can kind of take care of those basic needs so that they're ready to move on and they're ready to, um, you know, continue to improve their lives, then I can pass them on to Kelly and they can get involved in the STEP program and really get going from there. That's very cool. So we have like a minute left and I would cover <laughs> three of the, uh, the initiatives, if you will, at the up center. Is there anything else that we missed in the last minute? I mean, we will have you back on, but I'm just saying, yeah. is there anything else that people need to know? We have our volunteer program with Jillian also overseas, where individuals who are looking to complete volunteer hours can complete those hours here at the Up Center, either in our office, just helping with our STEP program. We have a success closet where we have items where people can find for their interviews. So we set them up with, you know, 
business casual clothing, um, business attire as well. Um, and we also have individuals being able to volunteer at a membership grocery program. So if you ever wanted to get experience what it's like working in a grocery program, some supermarket sweep stuff, um, <laughs> you should come out and volunteer here at the Up Center. Um, so individuals are able to come in and speak to Jillian and she's able to create a schedule for them. We allow people to come off to come in for one-off opportunities. So if they just want to come one time, if groups want to come, we have students who have come in to support us uh, through our volunteer initiatives as well. Um, there's a, a plethora of opportunity for volunteer opportunities here at the Up Center. Actually, I don't think we've done this in a while, but we like to lay out like challenges, if you will, yeah. on the show. And we, we challenge anybody that's listening, particularly because we know we've got a, a large audience because they tell us this, that they listen to us on the way to church or on the way right. back from church, <laughs> or they know they're running late if there's a certain, you know, we get to a certain part <laughs> on the show. Uh, so if you're on your way to church or coming back, I would, I would, uh, encourage you to go to your congregation and talk about maybe as a church you can adopt the up center and provide the volunteer support and help um, because you know the more we all give back in the community the stronger the community is right Absolutely. and then I also want to point out before we sign off I notice you guys are in your computer lab right yes so yes. they have a very extensive computer lab um, that obviously is utilized as well so just I'm just pointing out that it's very modern it's very <laughs> you know uh, up to date and whatnot all right so uh, we're remind everybody to call the up center at 772 I'm going to slow down Kelly you did this wonderful 772 468 8543 again 468 8543 you can also check them out on Facebook uh, cause Ashley follows them. So they're clearly on Facebook at the up center. And then what's your website address? Up slc.org. So up slc.org. I like that. Nice. Simple and to the point. We're fans of this. <laughs> yeah. 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 We're big fans of simple websites. All right. Uh, thank you so much, Julian and Kelly for coming on. You guys are fantastic. And I have a feeling that you'll be another on the show another time. And we're going to talk about thank fates you. as well offline. <laughs> uh, I want to remember, remind everybody to check out the up center and a simple reminder that it's our community, our child, I'm sorry, let me rephrase that. Our children, our community, our future. I only say this every show and I always forget our community. <laughs> Our children, our community, our future. And remember that we're all in this together. We'll see you next time. Thank you. In a world where seconds could be the difference between life and death, I realize I was born for this. I am prepared. I am present. I am Dad! the Water Watcher.